All right, guys, so in this example here, we have a load here, and we have two boats pulling at that boat. So we have boat A pulling at uh, two, a force of two kilonewtons, and that's 30 degrees above the horizontal. And then conversely, we have boat B pulling this load um, at some unknown force, which is FB, and that's going to be some sort of angle below the horizontal called theta. So we're told that the, the resultant force of these two boats is actually equal to three kilonewtons, and it's directly across the x-axis, and we're going to be looking for FB as well as the angle theta. So if we put these forces on the x and y axis like this, um, we'll have a 2 kilonewton force going something like that, and then we'll have some unknown force, FB, going something like this. Uh, we're told that this here is 2 kilonewtons, and then this here is 30 degrees. This here is our unknown angle theta, and that's our force, FB. Now we were told that we have that uh, resultant force along the x, so something like this. And that's going to be, uh, we'll call that fr, or just th we'll label it as 3 kilonewtons actually, because it's given to us. So we'll call that 3 kilonewtons. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close up this um, sort of configuration that I have going here to create a parallelogram. So I'll redraw the 2 kilonewton force from the tip of our other force, fb like so. And then I'll draw uh, force FB coming from the tip of uh, the two kilonewton force, and it'll be something like this. And as you can see now, we have a closed parallelogram, and we can fill in some unknowns here. So we have 30 degrees here, and then again, this is two kilonewtons, and then this force up here is going to be the unknown force FB, and this here is our angle theta. And now if you take a look, you actually have a couple of triangles. So this uh, pretty much, you have this triangle up here, this uh, 3 kilonewton force, FB, and 2 kilonewtons. And then down here, you also have that 3 kilonewton force, which serves as the hypotenuse once again. And then you have a 2 kilonewton and FB. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to transcribe this triangle out of this um, coordinate system here, just so that I can have a, a cleaner uh, model to work with. So we'll have uh, FB, something like that, and then our 2 kilonewton force, and then, of course, our resultant force acting horizontally. And now if you notice, we have a, I just filled in some stuff we have here, and we have a side-side angle triangle. We have two known sides and one known angle. And that known angle happens to be the opposite angle of our um, unknown side. So I can actually just use the law of cosines here to find force FB. So we'll have that force FB equals uh, the square root so I'll actually draw the square root first, of 2 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 2 times 3 times the cosine of 30 degrees because that's the opposite angle of our, uh, of our unknown force, FB. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll find that force, FB, and make sure you're in degrees, not radians. You'll have 1.6 one five kilonewtons. So here's our magnitude of the resultant force FB. And we can go ahead and actually fill that in here on our triangle. So let me do that. So we'll have 1.615 kilonewtons. And now notice you actually have a side, side, side triangle. So now we can actually use that to find our, uh, unknown, uh, our unknown angle here, theta. Once again, I'm gonna apply the law of cosines, except this time we're going to be looking for theta um, in our cosine here at the end. So th that being said, remember that the cosine of the angle that you're substituting into this formula has to be the opposite angle of the of the known side. So if we're looking for theta, the opposite angle, the opposite side of that angle should be two. So we'll have two instead of FB on the side. So we'll have two equals the square root, and then uh, once again we're going to have to plug in uh, our sides here. So we'll have three squared plus 1.615 squared, here's, here's where our known resultant force comes in, plus 2 times 3 times 1.615 times the cosine of our angle theta. So let me close that bracket now. So now we just need to isolate 4 theta. So if you square both sides, you're going to have that 4 equals 3 squared plus 1.615 squared plus 2 times 3 times 1.615 times the cosine of theta. All right, now we just need to isolate for theta uh, one step further. So I'm going to do 4, subtract, 
three squared subtract 1.615 squared and then this term here is all uh, multiplied by cosine theta so we'll just divide it by that so we'll have two times three times 1.615 and all of this equals cosine of theta so to get just theta we're just going to take the inverse cosine of this whole thing here sorry about the messiness there but all of this should equal theta and if you plug it in your calculator you'll actually have that theta equals uh, 141.74 degrees but if you subtract 180 degrees from that you'll have 38 0.26 degrees. You have to kind of make sense of the angle that you're working with here because um, this here yields you a negative number, but here we're all we're working with all positive numbers here, so you're not going to have such a big angle. Um, so if you were to um, simplify this here, like I said, you'd have a negative number. So if you just multiply it by negative one, then you should have a positive value here, and then that if you take the uh, inverse cosine of that positive value, that should yield you with this 38.26 degrees. And you know that makes sense because you could just just from inspection you can tell this is not going to be an obtuse angle, even by by the angle shown in the in the schematic that they give you. So um, so yeah, so your angle here is going to be equal to 38.26 degrees below the positive x axis.